Hi, everybody, and welcome to CFE Media and Technologies Virtual Training Week. For this session, working together for ICS Digital Safety and Cybersecurity, perspectives and insights from Next IT Guy. We'll be joined by our good friend, Jim Cook, COO of Velta Technology. I'm your moderator, Gary Cohen. Happy to be with you today on behalf of Industrial Cybersecurity Pulse and CFE Media and Technology. CFE Media has met the standards and requirements of the Registered Continuing Education Program. Credit earned on completion of this program will be reported to RCEP at rcep.net. A certificate of completion will be issued to each participant. As such, it does not include content that may be deemed or construed to be an approval or endorsement by RCEP. So let's talk a little bit about the session that you're gonna go through today, the, which is about IT and OT and a little bit of the convergence there. Lines of delineation between IT and operational technology or OT have historically been siloed and separate. With convergence of the two in Industry 5.0, the need for common understanding and process processes relating to digital safety and cybersecurity is crucial. But why does it seem so difficult at times to address? Today, we'll explore and discuss the dynamics, including people, processes, technologies, solutions, roles, and procedures from both an IT and an OT perspective, from the perspective of an ex-IT guy. Some of the learning objectives we're going to get to today. You will discover what digital safety is and why it's important. You will learn how to determine who's responsible for digital safety and ways to secure buy-in. You'll acquire methods to gain a baseline of understanding for digital safety and cybersecurity within your organization. We'll explore conflicting perspectives that can get in the way of executing digital safety protocols. And we'll evaluate multiple ways to move forward based on your organization's structure and needs. Here are a few tips to give you a more seamless online experience. Additional resources can be viewed and downloaded on the left-hand side of your screen below the session's agenda. If you'd like to take notes within the session, just click on that left panel labeled notes to do so. If you wanna take the session again, not a problem. The session will be available on demand. And if you're experiencing difficulties, please log out and back into the session to continue. Attendees are eligible for one PDH credit for this event, which is airing on October 18th, 2022, and is categorized within the technical, health, and safety, including core technical category for RCEP. This event is a live educational session presented on October 18th, 2022, and on demand afterward. Now the fun part. I'm going to bring on our presenter for the day, and you won't have to hear me talk anymore, Jim Cook. Jim is a good friend here of uh, CFE Media and Technology and Industrial Cybersecurity Pulse. He's the COO for Velta Technology and a former IT executive, as we mentioned at the beginning. He spent his career in executive roles within IT organizations for Jockey International, Rawlings Sporting Goods, Arthur Anderson, KPMG, and Heartland Dental. Jim has a BS in Management Information Systems from St. Louis University. All right, Jim. I'm done with my intro. I am very happy to turn things over to you. Take it away, Mr. Cook. And uh, before we do that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and allow you to share yours. All right. Here we go. Thanks for that introduction, Gary. Uh, let me make sure I, oops, I have this sharing correctly. I think we are... Good to go now, right? There we go. Everything looks great. Take it away, All right. Sir. Well, welcome uh, to all the viewers here. Um, appreciate you taking the time to uh, pop in and, and, and listen to what an ex-IT guy has to say. I, I, I uh, uh, just want to say, I'm a, as, as Gary mentioned, former IT, big four consultant, um, and, and spent most of my career doing that. But in my recent years, I've really dove down deep here with Delta technology in the OT cybersecurity space. And that I feel now lets me call myself a former IT guy or the ex-IT guy here. So hopefully you'll find my perspectives interesting um, and, and worthwhile of your time. And I want to open with a story. We have this picture of uh, uh, the panel and uh, a couple of guys talking with, uh, you know, the hard hats and, uh, I'll open with this, this story uh, about a few years back, and maybe it was 10 years back, I'm the CIO uh, dealing with all the global enterprise systems of, uh, of a particular company. 
And, uh, you know, with that comes visiting facilities. And at, and at one point I, I went out onto a facility floor with a lot of automation everywhere and talking with the guys on the floor, great, great people. Um, I pointed to that, uh, what I called that box over there, what's in that box. And uh, they said, oh, you mean that's the enclosure? And I said, yeah, sure, open it up. They opened it up and let's just say, uh, looked like the left panel there, the left picture, um, probably a bit messier and two to three times more uh, uh, devices and, and wires in there. And I, I just kind of shook my head and I said, close that up, close that up. <laughs> I've got enough problems. I, 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 don't, I don't need yours, you know? I, I, so, so, you know, that kind of takes it from, you know, who I was to now, understanding what those devices do, understanding um, um, my journey of understanding those devices, how they're connected, what they do on the floor, getting a, a better perspective of what this OT and I, I, IT uh, convergence that some call it uh, is happening. And, and I wanna say I'm not alone. I'll, and another story, a friend of mine, a CFO of a manufacturing facility, as I'm explaining, you know, these concepts to him more recently. And he said, wait a minute. He said, you mean you're talking about those boxes, those green boxes with all the blinking lights that look like a Christmas tree? And I said, yeah. And he said, and you're telling me that in those green boxes, there's a bunch of things that have code on them. And I said, yeah. And he said, he said, well, and, and they're connected to the internet? And, and I said, yeah, yeah, they are. Ultimately, they're connected to the internet now. And he said, my God, I must have hundreds of those out on the facility floor. What, what, wait a minute, why hasn't anyone done anything about it? So, uh, you know, that, that picture a bit represents me. How many times you see a guy walking with a, uh, uh, a suit on, uh, on the floor of a facility, uh, you know, they're not normally there. Uh, that that hard hat is is probably borrowed like I used to have to do. I, I have my own now, um, and and I'll bet you uh, he he's not wearing uh, uh, the proper safety shoes down there either. He's probably got the you know around his nice loafers, uh, those uh, rubber soled uh, 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 steel tips on it. Um, so that's a little bit of me, my perspective. But now now that I've been. Um, uh, uh, you know, years spending the past few years really delving down deep. I, I, I hope I have something uh, to offer here. You know, uh, this slide, some of you may have seen this before. Um, it was purposely built for separation. We had the IT and sometimes referred to as the luxury, uh, the carpet uh, versus the concrete, right? And the former me would look at this uh, diagram and say, wait a minute, you know, we got more stuff than just the IT, right? We've got, you know, what you're showing, we've got switches and stuff. Guy out on the floor, go, well, yeah, we got switches. I mean, these things are all connected. And it's, uh, you know, uh, well, uh, well, really? Okay, well, that, that looks complicated. Again, I'm going back to the former man, it's, it, you know, well, we've got enough problems uh, you know, I, I don't know enough about that stuff over there in the OT and the concrete, you know, I suppose you have vendors that do now. And then the guy on the uh, uh, other side would say, yeah, I, I suppose this is being addressed by my vendors. And that's the way it was. And that's the way in, in some cases it, it still is. But things have changed, right? Now all those industrial devices are getting smarter. Um, IP networks have been uh, put and introduced to connect things like the IOs and uh, the PLCs that are up there. And, you know, for control systems people, it's, it's probably, yeah, yeah, well, that's been around for a while. And, and then it started, well, let's connect it a little bit. We did, let's just connect it to the enterprise network. And, and then uh, it moved to, well, now let's connect it to the internet. And, you know, now, these things can flow in and out. And yes, maybe in some cases we have firewalls and other cases, um, you know, maybe we don't have the proper firewalls. Uh, so now that we've got this cybersecurity is introduced, it's, it's fallen between a gap. And then, let me tell you another story. And this is, 
a CIO uh, that I know of, and she was a member. She or he was a member of uh, a, a company that was was breached, and they, they did a great job of after the breach, and 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 they spent the time and the money to recover and fix it and get it right. And then we, you know, I, I sat down with the executives and we had a discussion and I said, well, how are you guys dealing with that? And they went back to the CIO and the CIO was, uh, mind you, done a great job um, recovering and, and putting them in a good place and said, no, no, you know, we're, we're covered, we're good. And I said, well, ask this very specific question. So are you covered in good, even on the manufacturing floor, all those devices on the manufacturing floor? And the response was, well, I, I didn't even know that was in my scope, <laughs> right? So this, it really brings it home where there's, there's this gap and these two worlds are out there. They're, they're, they're becoming interconnected. And, and even the individuals from the former IT or the OT side, they don't realize that, that no one's covering this space. And it's happening and it's happening out in the real world. So I want to take a, a couple minutes here and 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 really draw out with it's it's the differences in focus, right? It's the differences in focus. There's different goals um, that that the IT goes after. We'll go in that in a little bit, but the the focus and how they attack the the uh, their 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 uh, day and you know the first one really is the enterprise standard and just as i mentioned in that story before just the term enterprise right and versus the ot definition somebody might think the enterprise well that well that means the enterprise that includes manufacturing well in it terminology it doesn't always and then using that standard and trying to say okay now i have my enterprise standard well that's the way that they manage to get everything talking and working together with everything else. So that's very, very important. Just all the plants and all the remote sites and all the buildings and all the floors, we gotta have standards to get all these things to talk to each other. Well, on the OT side, you talk to, you go out to a facility, it is plant focused, right? What is in my four walls and what do I need to do to operate and produce, right? And sometimes that, that, that's hard for the IT personnel graphs, just like the plant focuses, you're worried about everybody else. I'm worried about me and this facility. So those, those uh, it, it kind of it will conflict at times. Uh, and, and they're worried about that production, <clears throat> right? They, they want efficiency out of that plant focus and resiliency. And that's what their focus is. Well, on the IT side, the, they're worried about the protection, the production is secondary to them. Well, it's, it's flipped in, in those worlds. Patching, patching is a great call out here because IT, one of the things that they've learned through their years of cybersecurity is patching is important. Patch, 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 update to the latest ASAP. Let's get that done. Well, the OT operates on process integrity, which means any change has an impact and it has to be examined. And there are, there are many down the line implications to any change. So hold your horses there we can't patch as quickly as you can and we can't do that well that that's a that, that that's a a hardcore uh principle for protecting yourself in the it cybersecurity world the other is the latest tech well this is another thing where the life cycle is just um uh, completely different it wants the latest tech Let's get the latest version. Let's get the latest firmware. Uh, the life cycle, if you've got a PC that's three to five years old, it's time to turn it. Uh, Windows is changing. Uh, there's a new version. And uh, on the OT side, we've got equipment that we've been running for 15, 20 years. There's got equipment that we put in five, 10 years ago. We're expecting to get another 10, 15 minutes, their years out of. And, and so that those then are conflicting. Um, scanning is another one, right? That's the common way that uh, IT goes out to discover what's on my network. Well, OT usually is, nope, nope, don't scan. Uh, they have network latency systems that are running and scanning could really interfere. Uh, the, another one that I love uh, is zero day. Everybody talks about zero day. Uh, that's the, the first time a virus. It's a big concern in the IT world. OT says, what are you talking about? And then in this 
this forever day that was coined by one of the founders here is their forever day for them. We've been living with these things for decades. <laughs> We've been living with uh, uh, th these open vulnerabilities forever. So why is it a concern now? And really it's that cybersecurity, the safety. OT is like, okay, you say safety, I'm, I'm with you. IT says, well, cybersecurity. So those, those are, are kind of the overriding concerns on either side. So where does this cybersecurity then fit in for the play for OT? And before I finish this, I just got to add another one for everyone that's been on the floor. And you've heard about this, another principle of, of IT security and it's MFA, uh, multi-factor authentication. And anybody that's been out on the floor, it's like my operator can't even, they, they don't even manage their own passwords, much less having more factors of authentication. And, and again, another conflicting uh, approach and, and focus uh, you know, for, for those different goals. So, so what is the digital safety, right? Both IT and OT have digital systems, but they're designed for the different outcomes, it's physical outcomes versus digital outcomes, right? And that's why we call them sometimes control systems. And those control systems are controlling the physical outcomes. Well, on the digital side, they're not. Cybersecurity you know, was previously just focused on the digital outcomes, but it's just not about credit card numbers anymore. It's not about um, uh, your personal information or, or private information being stolen, which is all digital. It's about this, this new considerations about the physical impact of what are those control systems doing? What are they managing? And it's, it's not only the impact of, of production shutdowns, it's, it's the implication of, of change and or an abrupt shutdown, right? An abrupt shutdown, that, that's something that can really cause damage and injury along the way, depending on uh, the process and the automation that it's controlling. And, and so really you bring the other slide to this slide together, the, the cyber security with the OT implications then really becomes digital safety. It's, it's, it's a bit more than just uh, uh, cyber security because of this physical outcome uh, element and impact that we're dealing with. Now, these together can be complicated and, and many of these might be uh, uh, you know, very, very common. Okay, new emerging technologies. Well, we've referred to them as digital transformation. And, and uh, I, I heard from a friend of mine once who said, that, you know, uh, they, they talked about uh, in the past few years, uh, their, their biggest digital transformation change agent, and they named him, his name was COVID. So a lot of new things are going out there, uh, including this remote access, um, the, the increased risk factors. I mean, we've seen a lot of activity um, and, and I suspect you will uh, continuing with the, the geopolitical state. Uh, that, that's the source of a lot of these uh, um, you know, cyber warfare and, and that, that code then manages its way out to the nefarious types, right? And then the global shortage of OT cybersecurity skills. You never, you, you do occasionally read about that. Well, you read about cybersecurity skills being very short globally. Well, the OT cybersecurity skills are even less available. It's, it's rare. And, and the, the attacks are getting easier. And a lot of that has to do with the fallout of some of the geopolitical instability. And, and you, you get down to this OT, IT convergence and some say, well, it shouldn't be converged. Well, they are ultimately connected and whether they converged or not, where is the line to that, right? Who owns, who, who manages that? Well, those questions aren't always answered. And, and, and let's not forget the insurance factor here because of the physical nature uh, uh, of impact and the claims against the cyber policies that those claims can run into the other policies of the property and liability umbrella. They don't just stay in the cybersecurity policy anymore. And the insurance carriers have taken notice over the past few years and looking out and those carriers are increasing the premiums while they're decreasing coverage. So there's a lot of different uh, factors going in for uh, consideration of this. Now, why is it important to, to to OT, I mean, the, these physical impacts, 
can lead to serious consequences, right? That first one, uh, unplanned, unscheduled downtime and disruption, uh, resiliency is important. Um, remote access, right? There's, there, there's always two worlds when you talk remote access in the OT. And one is, well, what's the standard IT solution? And then the other, what do we do when production's down? And uh, we'll get remote access no matter what, right? And, and even, it, you know, if people think that the VPN is, uh, is secure, well, the VPN is only secure as the connected device to the VPN. And, it, and you know, that's not just me saying, and you look at any of the Rockwell advisories, uh, that'll mention that inside of there. And the others, uh, you know, legacy equipment, limited antivirus. For OT and control systems, this is, uh, this living with these vulnerabilities is a reality and it has been. Um, and, and those production disruptions and shutdowns, they can require extensive extensive cleanup, extensive startups. And, and I think that's not anything new to anyone that has these control systems experience. Um, and, and some of those processes for startup and cleanups, they deal with dangerous materials. It's flammable, it's explosive, it's corrosive, uh, not only to the machines, but it could be to the environment and to the people. And, and this is personal for me. I've got a daughter that's a chemical engineer and she works in some of these types of environments. Um, and, and, and again, like I said, the OT controls people know that, but it's new for IT to consider, right? And they have to think about that physical impact of how they move forward with it. So this is probably a common familiar picture for the many watching, you know, from a controls perspective. But again, it's a, uh, it, it's a, it's a digital image that talk about these physical systems <clears throat> that have the physical outcomes, right? And I'm, I'm relaying that because IT folks don't always think that way, right? They think in not the Purdue model, they think in the OSI model, they think in digital, they don't think in physical. And, and sometimes this picture really helps represent it for those I, IT folks, right? They, it, there's physical locations, there's, there's processing that's going on. There's dependency and interlocks between all these systems. They're, they're in rough environments, they're in physically disparate buildings. Um, and then what is the impact of all that? Um, how are those things connected? And, and it, it, that's, that's an education for the IT folks. So if you're working with them, um, it's good to use a facility layout. It's good to talk about those processes and let them know, you know they, there's, there's digital systems behind uh, those boilers. There's digital systems behind those conveyors. There's digital systems behind uh, the packaging or the, the bottling or whatever process you may be, the mixing that might be going on. And, and their reliance on these systems of systems going through. And, and also it's, it's good to, to, to show them these pictures because you know, sometimes they don't get out on the floor because commonly IT folks, like I mentioned before, don't properly dress for that and, and aren't dressed for that to get out on the floor. But it's, it's a good thing to, to do that, bring them to the floor and educate them on what production means in your environment. Now, of course, the common myths, misconceptions, but are they really facts, right? Um, you know, the first one we always hear is the air gap myth, right? And the air gap myth can come from the OT or can come from the IT. I can tell you, you know, outside of a very small slice of environments, which might be nuclear and maybe some government, not really sure, the air gap is a myth. Well, we're air gap, right? Well, then you start digging into it. Well, we're near air gap. Um, well, how do you even know that this is verified? But that's why we call it the myth. And you, you've got to be prepared to not let things like this derail discussions to move the conversation forward. Um, obsolete end of life equipment. Uh, the 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 
as I said, patching and updating doesn't happen. Default passwords are, are needed to use because multiple people access device. There aren't systems to manage that misconfiguration. But th these things, those things can drive IT people crazy. They're like, well, wait a minute. No, if we had a if we had a 15 year old laptop, we'd tell you to throw it out today and, and, and get you a new one. That's that's standard operating procedure for them. And it, it's a it's a hurdle that you got to help them get over. Um, the same thing with that software updates and patches. You go, no, nope, no, nope, we, we can't. That Let's talk through what that means in the regression testing and the dependencies before we can even put something like that on and what the potential impact of a patch could be. A patch could be just as dangerous as what you're trying to protect us from. And the default passwords. Well, you know, we, they want to go to multi-factor authentication and it's easier to operate with no factor in authentication. And maybe we should add that to the one of the slides, no factor authentication. But there's methods to go around that and misconfigurations. Well, it didn't matter 10 years ago. And so it's still sitting out there. We don't go back and review that. It's working. If it ain't broke, don't touch it. Well, how do you show that it's broke? And of course, this remote access, right? And, and that's that's a bit of a myth. We've talked to many companies and, and they say, well, you know, we don't really do remote access. Oh, well, yeah, but we do it here, kind of. But don't worry, it's protected, it's VPN. And, and you say, okay, let's start talking about that. Well, how do you know who's connecting? How are you managing that? And then, then you ask that question, like I said, there's two, two versions of remote access. It's this VPN and what the IT says is available. And then the other is, well, hey, production's down. We're going to do whatever we can to get production up. And security just gets in the way. You know, it's got to happen now. So if that production's down, we're going to find a way to get this remote access. And so it, this is the this is the environment that that is out there. And, and it's whether IT or OT likes it or not, this is this is what we're we're all dealing with. So how to get that baseline, right? So now we're, we're, we're getting, understanding some of the perspectives uh, from either side. And how, how do we get that? How, how do we get us on the same page? And <clears throat> cybersecurity for OT, it's, it's, it, we have to remember, it's not a point in time, uh, nor is it a solution. We put it in, we're fixed, right? And we're done, we got there. It, I mean, it's a journey. I mean, it took us years and decades to get to where we are from the OT side. <laughs> so it's going to take some time to get out of there, right? Um, if ever, with the constant change that's going on, right? I, again, if, it, if we've got equipment, we're expecting the last 20, 30, 50 years, uh, it, it gets cost prohibitive to change a, a, a line out versus changing a PC out. So what, what you want to do to get that baseline is really ask your question, where are we in this journey, right? Where are we in this journey? And one of those first questions, that first question at the top is one of our, is one of my personal favorites, right? And, and we ask the question about the cybersecurity and say, are we doing the same things over on the OT side that we are at IT? The same level of due diligence that we're doing on IT side. And once you start separating that, you find you find the answers of well wait a minute well I didn't think it was in my scope right and it leads to the next question well whose scope is it in who owns it and 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 further down and you start going well wait a minute we we haven't identified this yet and and and, and that's where if you don't know what you don't know let's involve some outside knowledge let's 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 find out is is it a business priority of operational resilience. Do we want to do we want to dig in there and say, is this important for the company? Because then it's, if it's important for the company, it's important for us to put time into. And, and the other the two or some other methods of, of doing a visibility study. Well, what do we have? How can we manage what we don't know? And then the cyber risk register to, to be able to communicate to, well, what are our risks? What are some risk scenarios? You know, how reliant are we? And if those risk scenarios happen, how real are they? And, and what are the impact, even at a high level? So, so it's about, to get to a baseline, it's about asking questions. It's about asking questions so that you can begin to build that, 
visibility and awareness within the organization across the organization so that you can have the support uh, to move initiatives further. <coughs> So we are then on to the barriers, right? You're finally going to ask those questions. You, you, you um, have some visibility within the organization. This is a discussion topic. And unfortunately, nothing's easy. Right? Nothing ever is easy. And you may come across barriers. And the barriers aren't just now between the IT and the OT, right? It's the C-suite. Wait a minute. This is what IT and OT up, reports up to. And commonly, <clears throat> you'll find that if you follow the OT uh, reporting tree and follow that upward and follow the IT reporting tree and follow that upward, the first time that they actually connect is in the CEO, at the CEO level. And whether that CIO uh, on, on the IT side reports to the CFO or reports to the COO or reports directly to the CEO, you're gonna find that those are two very separate organizations uh, uh, within an operation. And that's where the gaps are gonna fall, right? And that first one is that assumption that IT has everything covered because they're using terms like enterprise, and cybersecurity, and you know, okay, it's great, it's covered. But you have to realize whether you're IT or OT, nobody's really out there looking for more work, right? The lines were already drawn 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. We drew the lines. So you guys stay on your carpet. You worry about that stuff. We're on our concrete. We got our four walls. We drew the lines. So, but we just assumed that anything outside the lines was covered by someone else. And then here's the, the term that I like, uh, unrecognized unawareness. And that's ultimately, you don't know what you don't know. And so there's a lot of, uh, organizations and operations out there that just don't realize that this is a problem until it's a problem, right? And <clears throat> then you get to the ownership and roles not defined. Well, well, this gets to well, whose problem is it, right? Um, who, who owns this thing? Well, you kind of have to back it up and say, all right, well, where does it start? And sometimes we see champions coming out of IT for bringing it up and then you see champions out of OT and it's going to vary from organizational organization of people to people but you know when it comes down to it I in my perspective and, I, and, I, and I'm here uh, with the organization I'm with it is our perspective that it, it comes down to that asset owner right so so who owns the resiliency it's that asset owner and they need to ask that question whether ultimately the role falls under them or not that says, okay, if I'm responsible for four walls, there's four walls and production of four walls, and I have these things, these digital systems and devices in here, am I a threat? And if I'm a threat uh, and it's going to affect my resiliency, what is what is the organization doing about it? Is it mine? Is it the IT? That that question needs to come out, and that, that OT side now needs to take some ownership. Because the IT's only got to go so far, they might get you up to the carpet and the the, the car, uh, concrete uh, transom there and hand you something, but they're still afraid until that OT guy reaches out and says, "Nope, uh, we want to work together. Uh, let's figure this thing out." It, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna move forward fast enough. It's not gonna move forward sometimes at all, right? And then, you know, the lack of resources, you know, it, it's, it's just not you, it, it, it's everybody. They're, these these the OT security resources are uh, uh, few and far between, good ones are even harder, but just in general, they're not, they're, they're just starting some programs, a few of them in the country, but a lot of them are depending on where they grew up and who they worked with and were they exposed to it in industry. Uh, they're not training them uh, and they're not cranking them out at schools. Uh, so where do you find them? Right. And then ultimately, uh, this budget thing, right? This budget thing is, is a tough one. Well, who pays for it? It's a tough one anytime. It's like, wait a minute, I got my budget and I work, work in an OT world. So I've got capital spending. Everything is efficiency. I've got my dollars. I have to produce. I don't have this discretionary OPEX to handle this, this cybersecurity digital safety thing for you guys. So maybe it's IT. So it's something that, that, that is a challenge, 
<clears throat> with moving digital safety forward in, in this context, because well, where does it go, right? And and, and it again, another thing that depends on an organization to organization, who who it hits. I I don't know if there's a perfect answer out there, but it but it has to be discussed. How are we going to budget for it? Where does it fall? Does it does it fall in the plant? Does it fall in cybersecurity? There are parts of it that are, are shared. And, and again, as I said, like that, then even when you get moving forward, then do you even have the resources internally to execute and operationalize? So even once we, we have it, well, who's going to do something with it, right? What are we going to do with it? How do we do something with it? You know, but, but, but what you have to realize is bringing all these groups together. The bottom line is this is a business risk. So no matter what these challenges are, these are business risks. And we are all in this together. This is the challenge, right? We're all in this together. We're trying to solve a business risk. It bleeds in everybody's world. So we're going to have to work together on this challenge and how to address digital safety. So what are strategies to move forward, right? Um, you know, this first one is a big one. You got to get talking at the same table. And when I mean the same table, in the same room um, sometimes, right? And is this a tabletop exercise of some sort? Is it a simulation event to get your organization, get the stakeholders together, right? Because this can be a real eye opener for organizational stakeholders. When everybody sits together and says, okay, this just happened. How do we deal with it? Well, you may get in, you know, one of, one of the scenarios I always put out there um, is that we have IT and OT networks and the IT comes in one day and through no fault of their own, if they're, they're attacked, let's even, let's even just say it's a state sponsor, but somebody comes in and they're, they're targeted and they're attacked and they come in and screens are lighting up, we're locked up, we're locked up, we're locked up. And you are connected to your operation and the operation uh, now says uh, you turn to the operation. You say, well, "Okay, so we're shutting down our IT systems until we can figure out what to, to do." What about all those computer systems on the OT side? And you might get a lot of people looking at each other, going, "Well, what about them? Well, are they infected?" And they'll look at each other and say, "Wait a minute, I don't know. How would I know?" Right? And, and that starts bringing out those gaps, and that's a big eye opener to say, "Okay." wait a minute, we don't even have the visibility to know if we're good or bad. We may have to shut down for safety precautions just to find out if we're good or bad. Well, that's that's a huge impact when you may have not even been impacted anyway. There, your OT network might be fine. You might not have a bit of problem. Your firewall and every all the security that you put in place has protected. Well, how do you know, right? How do you know is it safe to move forward? And again, that's that digital safety, where right? we, we roll the safety into the aspect because safety is everyone's problem, right? And then it's it's about learning together, right? And, and if it's a business risk, and this is why I like the term digital safety, because safety is everyone's responsibility here. And it, that means we got to learn together. Well, okay, well, who's responsible? Who who, what are we protecting? Let's let's walk on that floor. Let's find out what's connected to the network. Let's see what's risky, not only to production, but to, to people and to the environment that could be out there. And, 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 and you know, leverage that outside expertise and don't try to get along because remember that unrecognized awareness, uh, that weird term I put on there? You don't know what you don't know. Um, that, that, there's a lot of that out there. And, and, and what you wind up getting is assumptions if you're not bringing in, whether it's, whether it's talking to someone in advance, whether it's using them as a dedicated partner or anywhere in between, um, this is a good thing to have because I'm still learning. And, and, and like I said, I come from the IT. I'm still out there in the field. I've got my hard hats walking those facilities and learning going, I hadn't seen that before, right? And, you know, let's think through how that, that impacts it. But ultimately then, it, you know, as you start moving it forward, you've got to think of it as a continuous improvement process, right? Just like everything else, just like we learned with 
uh, you know, engineering, how do we get better, right? This shouldn't be a, a foreign term. It's, and it's, it's a, you got to find those ways. You got to find those ways to get better and you can get better at understanding what you're dealing with and how do we address that, right? So if my previous slide, I, I would call that my together slide, right? It's a, it's a business risk. Uh, uh, we need to all own it. We need to start working together. Um, it, you know, this is what I have to say is our, my get better slide, right? So, you know, together, we've got to work together. Now we got to figure out how to get better, which, you know, kind of brings me to the, a bit of the wrap up here, right? which the cross-discipline teamwork. And I know some of these things are a bit of cliche, but if my last slide was together, my this the previous slide was get better. This is my <clears throat> answer, which is, okay, let's get better together slide, right? You know, so so how do we do that? And and yes, the those cliches and the teamwork and everyone achieves more. But first it's that communication piece. So, so let's understand the different perspectives, you know, what it you know, some of those uh, elements of how IT is attacking and, and OT. So we come from different worlds. Um, we have to remember that communication is a two-way street. So, you know, they, they might, uh, th their methods might not work in your world. Your world methods don't work in their world. So, so let's, let's figure out how to uh, talk to each other. And then, and then let's recognize those risks. What, what are our real risks out there? And what are the gaps? What are we missing? Do we not know? Do we need to, do we need to start thinking about um, how to really understand our risk? How, do we need to back it all the way up to go, we just need to understand what kind of equipment's connected to our network. Then we need to figure out our risk. Um, <clears throat> You need to figure out the, the resourcing side of it, the ownership side of it, right? So what are those roles? Who, who owns what? Um, you know, how are we going to attack this? Who's going to do that? Do we even have the resources? And, and then start supporting each other as you go through that and recognize that, you know, there is truly a, a carpet concrete divide here when it comes to these disciplines, even though they're based in technology, they're based in digital systems. But their approaches were defined because of different outcomes. So you want to move forward along in that journey. And, and, and yes, you want to get better together, right? Uh, and, and that's what you need to do to address the digital safety. So with that, um, you know, I want to thank you for viewing. And, and I believe next, uh, we'll move on to the next session, if I'm correct with that, Gary. That's exactly right, Jim. Thank you so much for all of that. It was fantastic information. Should be a topic of uh, quite a bit of interest to CFE Media's audience, which obviously is heavily OT engineers. A lot of them still trying to figure out the cybersecurity part and trying to figure out how to bridge that IT OT divide. So thank you so much for all that. Uh, now welcome. we're going we're to transition here into a little question and answer session. Well, we'll really put Jim on the spot. We're going to test his IT OT knowledge. You ready to tackle this, Jim? I'm ready as I'll ever be, Gary. Let's go for it. Which is somewhat ready, let's be honest. <laughs> um, so one of the things that you mentioned in one of your last slides, you were talking about ownership and who should own it and the asset manager should own it. Well, one of the, the complications you and I have actually talked about previously is a lot of these OT engineers and OT systems, the systems have been around for 20 years, but so have the engineers. So how much pushback do you get from people who have never had to think of cybersecurity in their life when you come in and say, hey, listen, cybersecurity should be your purview now. Right, right. It, it, you know, that, that does depend. And it's always organization to organization. But, it, you know, it, it, you're always going to have individuals, whether they're on the IT or OT side, that I've mentioned this before, that I'm not looking for any more work. I'm not looking for more problems, right? And I, I'm drawing this box. And, and, and so, you know, when we run into those or if, if an audience member runs into those, you have to go, okay, well, whose problem do you think it is, right? Mm -hmm. And let, let's, you know, roll up the chain or roll across the building or let, let's find somebody that, that, that is open to thinking about that. And maybe it's from a resiliency side. 
Um, you know, ultimately they'll want to get in, but there's always going to be people that don't want to, that, that like the stability, don't want to change. And, and, you know, sometimes that is an engineering trade, uh, <laughs> change bad, but, uh, uh, but, uh, there, there's a lot of good open-minded engineers out there. That's, that, that's the norm. And you, you got to find those in the organization. And if that's going across up or down, uh, to find somebody that's willing to open that discussion. up. Got it. Uh, another thing that you mentioned during the talk was cyber insurance. You touched on that briefly. It's becoming more and more important in the industry. Uh, if somebody has never had cyber insurance, never been involved, what would you tell them if they were to ask, is it important to move forward with this? Is this something we need? Yeah. I, well, one, I would say if they think that they've never had cyber insurance, they probably just don't know that their company has cyber insurance, right? Um, it, it's, cha it's changing um, as fast as this environment, right? Uh, and, and if you're not involved, uh, and that's not an unusual, in fact, it's probably more likely the norm than it is the, uh, 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 than what you would see. So you've got to find out who has that information because what's happened, what's going to happen in 2023, Lloyds of London have just issued this recently, uh, in the past month or so that they've said, Hey, uh, that we're not going to issue uh, and back or um, underwrite any more policies in 2023 for cybersecurity insurance because uh, it, for anything that's state state backed attack, right? What is state backed attack? Well, was that the Russians did it? Was that the Chinese did it? Um, who knows? That, that was what you were attacked by. So uh, that's almost like a war type of exclusion. Now, is that tested in? The courts yet? No, not really. But you don't want to be the guy that gets uh, denied a claim and then have to wait five years and test it in court and have all this litigation to it. But th that's changing. And so the Soloids is putting that in play. And, and one of the key statements, if you look at why they did that, was because of the, uh, the, the, the digital impact in the OT world. Um, because the fallout of a claim of cybersecurity isn't, oh, we got to do... Uh, uh, credit reporting for clients and, and the, the digital aspect, it falls out of that cybersecurity and, and flows over potentially into liability, you know, commercial uh, umbrella. And so they, their experience, they're trying to hedge their bets. I mean, insurance companies need to make money too. So, so that's changing. And, 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 you know, if you have the opportunity to, to find out who does the cyber insurance and at least say, hey, just so you know, we're doing these things and we'd like to bring you into our group and our discussion, just so you're aware, um, you know, that, that that's certainly a, um, uh, you know, good, good way to go in, in, in getting that team together. Got it. What, what if somebody on the plant floor, an OT engineer came to you and said, hey, listen, my IT team told me we're protected by a firewall. Isn't that enough? Right, yeah, um, that that's that's one of the more common uh, responses, and and this gets into the unrecognized unawareness, right? That I mentioned, which, okay, we're good. We put the firewall. Well, what, you know, I've heard it, the firewall is uh, you know is Swiss cheese. What do you do with the firewall? The first thing you do is punch holes in it, right? And on one side, that's punching holes doesn't understand what's on the other side. They're just doing whatever. Uh, uh, you know, they, that the OT side asked them to do, well, you, you had a vendor said, punch those holes in it. Well, how does that impact anything else? How, what, what's the, the fallout of that? Well, I don't know anything on the concrete side. We just did what you guys said. So that, that gets into the unrecognized awareness and what risk are you really you putting in place? And, and, and the second is, well, who's verifying whether it was done correctly or not, right? I just did what they said. I, they said they did what I asked them. And the gap still remains. So firewall <clears throat> is a viable part of the protection technology that you need to have in place, but it's only one part. And uh, if, if they're telling you that's your only part, then you need to um, keep pushing and you need to, to, to address it and do some of the things that we talked about in, in the previous session. Another thing I've heard from, from OT professionals is this idea of, well, shouldn't IT be responsible for cybersecurity when we are responsible for production? That's usually the relationship. Shouldn't it always be that way? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, that, that'd be a great, perfect world, right? Um, we do our thing, we do. And that, that just reinforces that divide, right? And that divide, um, quite frankly, just doesn't exist anymore. And um, 
uh, it's it's that space between those lines that's the issue, right? Because that for them to run production, they still need these technology and these digital systems. And for these guys over in IT to run their enterprise systems, they need manufacturing. Well, we need to figure out a way to work together. Now, does, does that mean IT is responsible for OT security? No, not necessarily. Again, depending on the organization. Does there need to be a group that says my responsibility is OT security? Could that be a controls engineer? Could that be a network security guy? Yes, but we can't we can't live our lives separate anymore. Sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tackle one more sort of OT argument here. Um, you mentioned uptime in or uptime downtime in your presentation, obviously of paramount importance to people on the OT side. Um, what if somebody came to you and said, hey, look, I don't want IT touching my systems. The last time they did that, we were down for a week. We can't have that. That turns the cash registers off. Can't we address this without them? Yeah, that's uh, that, that, those are very real statements I've heard, and and uh, um, from other clients that whether it's a week or thirty days, or um, and, and they come to find out it was something that the IT organization had done or released into the wild, and there's a there's going to be a hesitancy there, and that yeah, I love this term that uh, uh, one of one of my partners here, the founder of the organization, uses. He goes. Look, I'm not asking for IT to quarterback this thing, but I, I need them in the huddle, right? And I, I, I just love that because that's it, really what it's about. Who needs to quarterback? Well, who owns that? The, the resiliency and the, you know, the avoid, avoidance and the, the efficiency of the, these OT assets and what those production is. That's got to be the quarterback. Does he need to catch the ball all the time? He might need to throw it to somebody. He might need somebody to block him. But he's still going to need the, that IT representation in there. So who's going to take that lead? And that gets to that ownership side. Um, can, you know, and, and, and one of the ways to attack that is to find partners that can, can operate in both worlds and help navigate that other side, right? To help speak the different languages, um, you know, to explain what the, the, the tackling or the, the blocking scheme is. Uh, while they're explaining what the pass routes are, to, to use another football analogy. All right, I'm going to get into semantics here with you a little bit now. So you guys at Velta often use the term digital safety. Do you feel like that term digital safety speaks a little bit more directly to OT engineers versus cybersecurity? Why do you guys choose to use that phrase? Yeah, I, you know, and I mentioned it um, uh, in the session. Hopefully I, I did. Um, you know, safety at on the plant floor is everybody's responsibility, right? And that's looked at and it's not swept under the rug. It's what are we doing for safety? How are we getting better at safety? What is our safety program? Because, because that, that, that human element, that environmental element, the impact, the physical, um, it's very, very important. Um, so we, we really like bringing that together with the, the, the digital safety. Well, for safety, what about that digital impact? What about the digital risks that are involving your safety and how you how are you addressing it? And that brings it home a little bit more than just the cybersecurity is for uh, the OT. It's like, well, wait a minute. My risk is still safety. Um, your risk is also disruption, but that, like I said before, abrupt disruption could cause safety issues, and 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 they're they're dealing with that every day. So now, hey, I, 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 let's just follow what we did with safety. Let's that makes sense to me. Um, that makes sense to my my physical world. This these physical outcomes that I'm dealing with, uh, and and why it's important, and why I should own it. Maybe I don't need to understand all the cybersecurity, and that's where. I, I get that those IT guys involved. That's where I get uh, some vendors and suppliers. That's where I get the solutions. But it's all about going, am I safe, uh, you know, from the digital impact uh, uh, or digital risk? Am I, am I safe in, in reducing my impact? Am I getting better at it? Got it. Uh, what are some of the main issues your OT customers come to you guys with? That's it's a good question. And when they're when they're coming to us, it, it's it's about they want to do something, right? I mean, which is a great start, right? I, I, you know, you got to recognize it before you can do something about it. And they, <clears throat> they want to do something, and they're just unsure how. 
And I had a great conversation with a great client today, a long-term client we've been working with. And, you know, I said, look, look you know, our, our first year together, we were, we're basically triaging, right? So we were triaging. And, and now what we're talking about is actually getting strategically uh, uh, planned together. All right. We, we triage the important stuff. It's raining down. So, you know, when they first come in, we want to do something. Hey, something's better than nothing right now. And that's, that's still getting better. And it's like, well, it's unsure how. Well, there's, there, there are ways to kind of build your risk and your priorities. Um, uh, but really getting out of the blocks is one of the most important things to do. Absolutely. Uh, what are some of the biggest cybersecurity or digital safety concerns you're worried about or seeing in the coming year? Well, that, that, that's a great one. I, I, I just look at um, the, the, the global instability right now, right? Um, you go back to the, uh, you know, the patient zero of OT uh, risk and cyber risk, right? And that's Stuxnet, right? That was born out of um, weaponizing the, the, the digital system to control the physical environment. That was before the internet. Um, so it's, we're entering in this next view or, or next version of war with cyber warfare really truly building into it. And we're seeing it now. And as it escalates, uh, there, there potentially could be collateral damage, even if they're focused, even if it's our side, their side, whosever side you're on is focused, there's going to be collateral damage. And then inevitably what will happen, some of that, uh, because this is code, these aren't weapons, can, can leak out into other nefarious criminal organizations that can find their way into it, right? And that's, it just seems to be, anytime you, you have this stability, you can go back and look at, um, uh, CISA does a, a, a wonderful thing now, finally, with the um, known exploits. And you can look and see when, uh, you know, the volume of known exploits that are published and look at uh, certain months of this year, and, and you can track back on when was the, 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 the big uh, invasion. And that, guess what? That same month has one of the largest amounts of uh, known threats that have been put out there. And, and granted, not all of them are OT, <clears throat> but <laughs> as we've talked about before, OT has some of those IT technologies in there and if they get in there. And now we have the OT being added into the language of the global stability. And I, you know, that's, that, that's always at the back of my mind going, are we moving fast enough as an industry? Um, <clears throat> are we moving um, and, and making the case and, and getting that understanding out of what those true risks are so we can move faster and we can put in some of the basics that will reduce the risk because those risks are accelerating exponentially. Makes sense. Unfortunately, we only have time for about one more question here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this with a kind of a high level question, which is you mentioned the C-suite, the board. How important is it to have buy-in from the C-suite for digital safety? And do you have any tips or advice for uh, convincing the people at the top that, that digital safety is, is worth spending money on? Yeah, it's, it, you know, that, it's very important, right? Because one of those uh, challenges and hurdles out there is the budget. Right. Nobody wants to spend their money. Everybody's protected your budget, and rightfully so. I mean, that's just the world you live in within an organization. Where's the money coming from? Um, and, and sometimes you'll need that uh, executive buy-in and the C-suite buy-in because they're going to have to be the referees to decide it. The other is, if it's not a business priority, does a company really need to be working on it? And so, um, you know, that has to find its way up to a business priority because it is a business risk. And there's a business risk that executive branch needs to understand it as a, and make it a business priority and say, you know, whether it's resiliency, whether it's cybersecurity, whether it's OT digital safety, uh, they're all intertwined. That has to be a business priority and we have to get better at it as an organization. That is all we have time for today. Hopefully you learned a little something about ITOT Convergence and thank you again for joining us for the CFE Media and Technology Virtual Training Week Education Session, working together for ICS Digital Safety and Cybersecurity, perspectives and insights from an ex-IT guy. A huge thank you to our speaker, Jim Cook of Velta Technology. Jim, thanks so much for being with us.
Always a pleasure, Gary. I just want to point out that if I, if Cubs fans and Cardinal fans can get together and have a conversation, then anything's possible. This is always the battle we have when we get together. But exactly, we are showing that things, conflicting sides can be harmonious. <laughs> On behalf of CFP Media and Technology, this concludes our session. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.